Hi, students. Welcome to the next lesson. We're going to talk about the mole. So please have your note packet out, and don't forget you can always pause, rewind, play, and ask questions at any time. You should have a professor, or, uh, you should have an instructor walking around helping you out. All right, so let's talk about what the mole is. The mole is the SI or standard -ish international unit based. Uh, sorry, base unit used to measure the amount of substance whose number of particles is the same as the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. That's quite a definition, and I know kind of hard to kind of take in there, but we're going to talk about that in a little bit more detail in a minute. What I do want you to take out right now is that a mole is a way of measuring how many atoms there are. It's kind of the big key point right there. But we'll get back to that upper definition soon. You need to know that one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the, 20, 10 to the 23rd atoms. That's, that number right there is called Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, or 602 sextillion. And that number is the number of atoms or molecules in one mole. This number will be important to us. In fact, it's kind of going to help us with our definition. So going back to our definition of what the mole is, uh, knowing a little bit more about that number, it says that it's the number of particles that are the same as the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. Well, if we had carbon-12, that's uh, atomic mass of 12, and if we had grams, if we converted that to grams or 12 grams of carbon-12, then what that means is we have one mole. And if we had one mole, that means we have 602 sextillion particles or atoms of carbon. Now that's kind of amazing. So one mole is literally equal to the average atomic mass of, a, of an element on the periodic table. This is what we call the molar mass. So looking on the periodic table of carbon or any element, if you look at the average atomic mass at the bottom and convert that just directly into grams, that's one mole. That's the molar mass. So 12 grams of carbon is one mole or 602 sextillion particles. So the molar mass, by definition, is the mass in grams of one mole of a substance. And the units of the molar mass is grams, or how many grams, whatever you find on the periodic table, per one mole. So 12 grams of carbon is needed per one mole, or 602 point times 10 to the 23rd particles. How about aluminum? Do you think you know what aluminum's molar mass is, looking here on the periodic table? That's right. If you said 26.982 grams of aluminum is equal to one mole, you would be exactly correct. But what does this even mean? Well, one mole of aluminum weighs 26.98 grams. If you had 26.98 grams weighed out, you would have one mole. And that one mole would be made up of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of aluminum. And that's true for any element. So the molar mass or the average atomic mass on the periodic table is the molar is also the molar mass in grams of that element, which is one mole. But what about compounds? If you had a compound, say BaOH2 or barium hydroxide, um, how would you find the molar mass of that compound? Well, all you would need to do is just add up all the individual elements in the compound's molar masses to find the molar mass of the compound. So if we knew that Ba on the periodic table was 137.33 grams per mole, and we had oxygen, which is 16 grams per mole, and we had two of them. And hydrogen was 1.01 grams per mole. Those are just the mo individual molar masses of each element. Um, if you added those all together, you would get 171.35 grams per mole. So this is the molar mass of this compound. So the periodic table is pretty phenomenal in helping us discover or figure out the molar mass of pretty much anything. So we can use the molar mass to help us solve problems. So here we have the molar mass of sodium. This is what we found on the periodic table. Now this isn't really anything directly related to what we're doing, to, to what we have. It says here that we have 15.6 grams of sodium. And it's wondering, all right, so we'll take that. We'll throw that down here. And it says, how many moles of sodium is this? So 15.6 grams. Again, this molar mass up here is not directly related to anything we have, but it is useful information in determining and, and getting to what we need to get to. So this number up here is what we call the molar mass. Now the molar mass is a conversion factor. It helps us get between grams and moles. You can think of it this way. If you had one mole of sodium, then 
for every one mole of sodium, you would need 22.99 grams of sodium. Or for every 22.99 grams of sodium, you would get one mole. It's pretty much the same written either way. So we're going to use that here, multiply what we have by our conversion factor. Uh, and I did it this way, putting grams on the bottom. I chose this one because I want to put grams opposite to what I have so I can cancel it out. I'm going to end up with our answer of 0.679 moles of sodium. So this conversion factor, this molar mass, is a conversion factor to help me get between grams and moles of what I need. I can do the same thing here with atoms. So how many atoms are in 6.9 moles of aluminum? Well, I have 6.9 moles of aluminum. That's true. But what conversion factor are we going to use? If we look back at our notes, we know that there is a conversion factor between moles and atoms. We know that one mole of anything is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of that thing. So we'll use that as a, that thing, which is called Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. We'll use that as our conversion factor between moles and atoms. If I had 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, then I it's one mole. Or if I had one mole, then that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So I'm going to use one of these conversion factors in our problem to solve and figure out how many atoms I have. So I'm going to use this one because I want to put moles on opposite sides. So I'm going to take 6.9 moles, times it by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms per mole, and I'm going to get my answer of 4.2 times 10 to the 24 atoms. So what do you do with Avogadro's number in the molar mass? Well, this is kind of a short summary of what you can do. If you wanted to convert between grams and you want to convert that to moles, then you just take grams of whatever you have and divide it by the molar mass of that substance, whether it be an element or a compound. However, if you had moles of an element or a compound and wanted grams, well, then you just multiply it by the molar mass of that element or compound. However, if you had moles of something and you wanted atoms of particles, this time you times it by Avogadro's number, that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. However, if you had atoms or particles of the substance and you wanted to figure out how many moles that was, then you would need to divide it by Avogadro's number. So knowing all of this, let's see if we could do a little bit more of a challenging problem. In this, we have 25.6 grams of aluminum, and we need to know how many atoms of aluminum that is. Now, I encourage you to pause the video and use the information we have to try to figure it out. Go ahead and pause it right now. Did you try it out? Well, I hope so, and I hope you figured it out. But let's go ahead and just try it out here. Well, if I have 25.6 grams of aluminum, I first need to get to moles. So I'm going to go ahead and times it by one mole over 26.9. This is the molar mass. I guess literally what I'm doing is dividing it by the molar mass. I'm taking 25.6 grams and I'm dividing it by the molar mass because it's on the opposite side of this division line. And I'm going to get 0.95 moles of aluminum. Literally what I'm doing right here in the middle is I'm multiplying it by 1 over 26.98, but it's the same as dividing it by 26.98. So this gets me to moles, which is not what my problem is asking. My problem is asking how many atoms are there. But moles is kind of the stepping stone to get me there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my number of moles and rewrite it over here. And now I can use my other conversion factor and go between moles and atoms or particles. Do you remember what that conversion factor is? That's right. It's Avogadro's number. So I'm going to take my 0.95 moles and I'm going to multiply it straight to Avogadro's number, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms over 1, and that's going to get me my answer, which is 5.71 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So kind of a big, comp you know, complicated mess. I had to do two steps, but it's really kind of cool that if I have a certain grams of a substance, I know via my conversion factors, my first one being the molar mass, and my second one being Avogadro's number, if I use those two conversion factors, I can eventually figure out how many atoms of a particle I have. And that's pretty neat. I hope this was a helpful video for you guys. I know we went kind of fast, but remember, you can always rewind back to certain parts if you are confused. You can always pause the video. I encourage you to talk with one another. I encourage you to talk with your instructor walking around. He or she should be you know, of use to you. Make sure you use all your resources and do your best. Good luck.